now this is the first uh, slide first question if anything you know before orthoplasty you must know this man so identify the personality what is his contribution to orthopedics what is his contribution to arthroplasty what is lfa and how lfa is different than modern day arthroplasty and most of you must know that uh, he is a professor sir john chanley is famous for hip arthroplasty he started with hip arthroplasty operation remember when you write you can write sir john chanley also you can write john chanley also or only chanley also examiners may give you mark i am just talking from examination point of view however the complete name is professor sir john chanley but he is not the first person to invent a implantable hip replacement remember that uh, glock in 1891 invented an implantable hip replacement so glock was the first person who invented a hip replacement however john chanley what he did he did the you know modern day hip replacement so what is his contribution to orthopedics their whole list of contribution to orthopedics first thing is lfa or low friction arthroplasty bone cement ultra high molecular weight polyethylene clean air enclosure total body exhaust suits what we use during surgery instrument session tray system trochanteric wiring technique and there is a chanley compression orthodesis clamp to do the knee orthodesis and also we do ankle orthodesis then chanley has written a conservative treatment of fractures so he was pioneer initially with the conservative treatment of the fractures and chanley's book is extremely helpful and chanley's black book for method of you know basic arthroplasty so these are his contribution to orthopedics so if the question is that what is his contribution to arthroplasty then the first you know six components you have to mention that these are the his contribution to arthroplasty only now what is lfa the complete full form is low frictional torque arthroplasty remember but if you write low friction arthroplasty also it is okay so remember this is low frictional torque arthroplasty now how you know lfa is different from modern day arthroplasty this is a x ray of the low friction arthroplasty that is classical chanley's method and this is what we do in modern day arthroplasty so chanley used a lateral approach whereas in modern day arthroplasty we use either a posterior approach or a lateral approach or recently the most recent one in the anterior approach to the hip the head size in chanley was 22.225 whereas modern day arthroplasty uses the head size of 28 32 or 36 mm the bearing surface was their metal that is stainless steel on poly tetrafluoroethylene initially chanley tile tried with this but this failed miserably so he tried with polyethylene so metal on polyethylene whereas modern day arthroplasty is metal on polyethylene or ceramic on polyethylene or ceramic on ceramic and here the fixation is cemented fever and cemented acetabulum whereas modern day arthroplasty it may be cementless that means both acetabulum and femur cementless it may be hybrid that means acetabular side uncemented and femoral side cemented or totally cemented when both sides are cemented or reverse hybrid reverse hybrid means acetabular side cemented and femoral side is uncemented now there is associated lateralization of greater trochanter through trochanteric osteotomy and there is a wiring of the greater trochanter whereas most of the modern uh, arthroplasty is through posterior approach but occasionally we do a trochanteric osteotomy for any difficult uh, approach hip or any difficult or complex hips now here charlie's principle was medialization of the acetabulum so used to ream and uh, medialize the acetabulum whereas uh, in modern day arthroplasty some cases like dysplastic cases you do medialization of the acetabulum otherwise you just ream to reach the floor of the acetabulum so those are the basic the differences between these two but if you write two or three points out of this then it is good enough to mention about the differences next third question there is a picture here and you have been asked what has been depicted here write an equation to describe it and enumerate the surgical procedures where this principle is follows as you know this is the hip biomechanics so you write what has been depicted here is the biomechanics of the hip joint so write an equation is a very simple equation that body weight into the liver arm will be equal to abductor muscle force into the moment arm so this has to be equal and this is the center of rotation okay so this is the equation you have to write enumerate the surgical procedure where this principle is followed first thing you write total hip replacement bipolar arthroplasty 
or osteotomies around the hip joint. While doing osteotomies, you have to balance the hip against the abductor muscle force. So remember, abductor muscles are the most important muscle around the hip. You can release everything, but you have to leave except the abductors. So osteotomies around hip. So these are the surgeries where this principle is followed. Next question will be shown a theater like that. As you can see here in the ceiling, there is something there. So name the type of operation theater. What is the advantage of this kind of theater? What are the types and how will you maintain this system properly? So they are very basic uh, questions related to orthoplasty. So you write name of the operation theater. You can write laminar airflow operation theater. But uh, it is better to mention when there is a ceiling loaded like this. So you write a vertical laminar airflow operation theater. So there are two types basically vertical and a horizontal laminar airflow. So what is the advantage of laminar airflow? These are the four points which are important. You can you may not write the whole sentence, but first thing is reduces the number of infective organism in the theater air by generating a continuous flow of positive air pressure. So most important part is this continuous flow of positive air pressure, which displaces the contaminated air away from operation site. So here a continuous flow of positive air pressure, then that get goes and gets absorbed in the in the, later, in the walls of the theater. So continuous flow of positive pressure is the first point. Second is air may be changed in the theater more than 300 times per hour. Remember 300 times per hour compared to standard positive pressure which is 15, 25 air changes per hour. So it is 300 times per hour. This is the most important part of this. Third point is the generation levels of colony forming units are in the atmosphere below 10 colony forming units per cubic millimeter. So there are different types of laminar airflow. There are class 100, class 10, class like this. So that means class 10 means this is the level of colony forming units are about less than 10 colony forming units per cubic millimeter. Now number of particles in the theater are lower. So these are the four advantages of this kind of operation theater. What are the types? There are two types, horizontal laminar airflow and vertical laminar airflow. Horizontal, they are loaded on the walls where you do not require any alteration of the theater. You can just put on the side of the operation theater. But horizontal laminar airflow is not a good laminar airflow. So the best laminar airflow is a vertical laminar airflow. How will you maintain this system properly? Remember the HEPA filters, that is high efficiency particulate air filters, has to be changed every six months. So the whole system needs to cleaning and the HEPA filters need to be changed every six months in order that uh, laminar airflow is very effective.